Greetings, cyber truckers and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from behind the wheel of Maximus the Truck in this Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2 series. In the previous episode, we successfully delivered some cement to Southampton in the UK. And in this episode, guys, we are heading to Amsterdam because we have taken a job to take some jazz to Amsterdam. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, we are taking this job over here, which starts in London. So we're going to first have to make a trip to London and then we're going to pick up the stuff that we need to take to, to Amsterdam. And we are going to Amsterdam in the Netherlands, which is going to be awesome. But guys, if you can remember in the previous episode, I was doing some yawning and uh, I do believe that is because I, I am incredibly tired. In fact, I haven't slept at all um <laughs> since the start of this series so i think what i'm going to do is have a look at the map and i think that um from what you guys have told me if you look on the the big world map you can actually see places to sleep and right over here next to this transnet um loading bay over here is a sleep icon over here so i'm going to see if i can get into this complex over here and have a little bit of a snooze because guys, we have been trucking for like uh, nine episodes or eight episodes and we have not slept yet and that is not good, man. We must be tired as hell, damn son. We have driven to France, we have driven to Germany, we've driven all over England and we haven't even slept yet. Now that is a freaking trucker if I ever did see one, man, seriously. All of you guys who are truckers out there or whose dads are truckers, you guys ain't got jazz on Rendog, man. I can drive like 48 hours non-stop without sleep Actually, way more than 48 hours, man. I can drive like a month <laughs> with no freaking sleep. So how do you like them apples? Um, ooh, that's actually a hotel. So I think that this is exactly where we want to go. I assume there's somewhere that we could park or something over here. So let's get into this hotel. And... Oh! Oops. Let's see. Is there somewhere... Is there like a little green icon or something that we have to park in? Hello, I would like a room, but I'm not going to pay a lot of money. I just want to have a sleep. Hello? Anybody? Anybody here in this hotel? Hello? Chris? No, I don't want to stop the engine. Or do I want to stop the engine? Press the following key to rest. Okay, sweet. So we're in the hotel. I'm going to press enter. Have a sleep. Oh, man. That's, wow, what an awesome sleep. Maximus, you are freaking comfortable, man. I think I slept in that bed directly behind us over there. Let's turn on the engines. Turn on the freaking lights. Get, this, get them brights going also, man. It is, how do we turn on the lights up in here? Damn, it is dark as jazz up in here, man. Whew. Right, now we got to turn this bad boy around. Three-point turn coming up. I remember this from my driving instruction lessons. There we go. Sweet. And let's get out of this dingy ass hotel parking lot, man. This place is looking uh, kind of creepy. There's a lot of creeping going up, uh, going on up in, uh, up in here, man. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Smell you later, hotel. Ooh, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm driving so badly today. Um, okay, so let's get back to our, um, let's get back to our GPS, please. There we go. All right, sweet. So we are on our way back to London, guys. We need to go pick up our delivery that we are taking to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And uh, it is, I think this is going to be a pretty awesome journey. And I'm really excited to go to the Netherlands, actually, because the Netherlands is actually my um, motherland. It is the country from which my genes originate. That's correct, guys. I am actually... Dutch. <laughs> Even though I don't speak Dutch or I grew up in South Africa, I am actually uh, Dutch. And whenever I go to, to Holland in real life, whenever I go to Amsterdam in real life, I've, I've, I've had to go sometimes for work and sometimes for pleasure. Every time I go to Amsterdam and every time I go to Holland, I, I feel at home, man. I really feel like, you know, this is my country. These are my people. In fact, I see my face um, in, a, in and amongst the men that I see in Holland and it's kind of crazy man it's kind of crazy to see my genes in action up in that country and to all of you Dutch cyber dogs man I freaking oh man I dig you guys and uh, I'm like your brother from another freaking mama um, and I am Dutch <laughs> uh, stop indicating okay there we go <laughs> uh, and I can't really speak Dutch but maar ek kan Afrikaans praat and 
Nia! No! I mean, I just said no in Afrikaans. No, we just got a fine. Why? Oh god, 440 pounds out of the freaking bag. No, that sucks, man. Um, I, I think... What is the speed limit here? What, what did I do wrong? Did I jump a... Uh, did I jump a traffic light or something? Oh, oh that sucks. Anyway, um, that's what happens when you try to speak Afrikaans. <laughs> well, anyway, I hope that you Dutch Cyberdogs could understand what I was saying. And uh, you Cyberdogs from South Africa, I know that you're out there. And um, I know that you understood what I was saying. But anyway, guys, we are on our way back to London. We just got a 440 pound fine. I, I think I was over the speed limit, which I think is 40. And what do you guys pointed out in the comment section of the previous video, that I, I can actually set cruise control uh, with the C key. And that, that is exactly what I'm going to be doing, guys. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be hitting the cruise control button so that we don't break any more speed limits. I mean, I don't, I don't know, even want to think about how much money we've wasted on fines so far in this series. It must be close to like £3,000 at least. And I mean, we are in debt right now, people. We have to pay Maximus off at some point and we just cannot afford to, uh, to pay up these fines. And I cannot see anything in that window. This is some treacherous jazz right now, man. Driving in the middle of the freaking night. Although the moon is pretty sweet. So anyway, so what is the speed limit up in here, man? We need to keep... Oh, look how much faster Maximus is now. And that's because we aren't dragging around a giant ass trailer of cement. And that's exactly why I just got fined, guys. Because I'm used to Maximus being really, really slow. Like, ridiculously slow. And now that we don't have a giant ass trailer to drag behind us, this this truck is so freaking fast. It's almost as fast as like a normal car. So I need to watch my speed limit really, really closely, people. And um, man, see, this, this is the thing. Like, you know what makes this game really hard for me to play? I know like tons of you guys like face palm a lot when you watch the series. I know that because a lot of you guys send me emails telling me about how much you face palm while I play <laughs> Euro Truck Simulator 2. But guys, have you ever tried playing this game and telling stories at the same time? It is not easy, man. Come on. I am a ma I'm a man. I cannot multitask, okay? I'm doing the best that I can to multitask, but sometimes, you know, things just go wrong. <laughs> Alright, anyway. I think Maximus is actually in kilometers an hour. Let's have a look at the speedometer over there. Yeah, I think he's in kilometers an hour, and I think the UK is in miles per hour. So we need to figure out what the speed limit is. It's 50 miles per hour, and we're on 44 miles per hour. So let's just get up to sort of close to 50 miles an hour, and then I'm going to hit cruise control. Bam! Cruise control! Sweet, there we go. I'm actually, I'm not holding the accelerator key anymore, and now I can literally just focus on turning left and turning right. So that's awesome. <laughs> Okay, awesome guys. We're about 89 miles from London to pick up our delivery for uh, Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And we're driving at night. It is a beautiful clear sky. I love how the, uh, the, the, the cabin looks at night. It looks really awesome. You know, I, I always loved being in a car at night for some reason. I, I always loved the glow of the, of the, of the dashboard and, and the buttons and everything. I don't know. When I grew up in South Africa, we did a lot of driving because we don't have really great public transport in South Africa. So, you know, I spent a lot of my time growing up driving with my dad, driving with my mom, and I've always loved cars. I'm a huge car fan, man. I'm a Volkswagen man. And don't even, don't even, don't even try and convince me that any, uh, any car other than a Volkswagen is the most awesome car on earth, because Volkswagens are the business. And my very first car was a, Vol a Volkswagen, and my very last car will be a Volkswagen. So uh, let's just put that to rest. <laughs> But um, I did a lot of driving and I always loved the way that the dials looked at night and man, they look so awesome in this truck. Um, really, really awesome. But guys, we are heading back to London and you know what? Oh! Oh! Man, my bad! Just crossed lanes over there. I literally just looked down because my foot was stuck on something and then uh, I crossed into another lane. And that's basically what happens when you actually drive. I mean, this is a driving simulator after all, right? You're not supposed to take your eyes off the road. So I'm keeping my eyes on the road, especially because it's nighttime. This is some dangerous ass jets. But dudes, I'm trying to tell a story up in here, man. I keep interrupting myself with noobness. <laughs> but we're going back to London. So I thought that I would tell you guys uh, another rather amusing story that happened to me uh, in London when I first moved to, to England about seven years ago. And this story occurs on one of the very first evenings that I went out in London with some other South African friends that I knew. And I had been in the country for, I don't know, probably about a month or so. 
and I didn't really know that many people in London yet. I had a couple of friends um, that I had made while I was selling tickets um, <laughs> in Leicester Square. I, I think I told you guys about that story. And uh, oh, check it, oh, that's an awesome looking petrol station over there. Check it that. Looks so inviting, man. I want to go for, go have a cup of coffee. Mm. Um, and of course, I was staying with my my, my ex girlfriend there also. So you know, and and I, I became friends with her flatmates and stuff. So you know, we we got on, and I had a couple of friends. But you know, I, I I wanted to go out. I had been looking for jobs for like a month straight, and I hadn't had any fun or hadn't gone out in London yet, or you know, got, gone anywhere or done anything cool. And I saw on Facebook that a couple of my sort of acquaintance friends from South Africa were in London. I knew them through friends in South Africa. I kind of knew them. I'd met them a couple times before. And I got in touch with them and I was like, dudes, let's hit the town, man. Let's go out in London and have a freaking sweet ass time. Let's go, go to a club and do some dancing, speak to some ladies, you know, just have a sweet ass time in London. Let's, let's do it, man. Let's, you know, let's go. And, um, and they said yes, and I, and it was it was three guys, and we better get into the left-hand lane over here, actually. There we go, because we are going to London. We're taking this this left off ramp over here on the way to London. And uh, everyone was really keen. Everyone was excited. I was excited, man. You know, th this was the first time I was going to go out in London. Uh, I, I didn't even know what it would be like. The, the one thing I did know was that it was going to be ridiculously expensive but um that was okay i you know i'd put a, a little bit of money aside to spend and i was happy to spend i think i probably oh i better slow down get, get cruise control off here and uh we met up early in that evening and we decided to go out and we just started in your average um you know run-of-the-mill london pub um you know we had a, a couple of beers there and we had a, a burger and chips and some of the guys had fish and chips because that's what you do when you go to a pub in England, guys. You have sweet ass beer and sweet ass food, and it is oh, it is awesome. Um, cruise control. <laughs> there we go. Um, I keep looking at my keyboard, and then I, I start swerving off the lens. Um, let's just get up to 50 miles an hour. Hit the cruise control. There we go. Sweet. Um, okay. And anyway, we were in this pub, and we had a couple beers. We had some food, and now we were ready, man. It was probably like 10 o'clock or so and we were ready to go out and see what London had to offer. We wanted to go into the streets of London at night, walk up the Thames, walk in Covent Garden, walk in the center of town, go to Leicester Square, go to Trafalgar Square, see all the sights, man, and hopefully pop into a sweet ass club or something like that and do some dancing. And we were out there, the three of us, man. We had burgers in our bellies. We had a couple beers behind us and we were, you know, we, we were in the zone, man. That night, we were indestructible. We were going to freaking paint London red like nobody's business. The ladies were going to be all over us. We were going to own the dance floor and everything was going to be awesome. And we were going to have the best night ever. That was the plan anyway. <laughs> um, and we were walking through London and somehow there, there, there is a, a part of London called Soho. And those of you guys who live in England or live in London will know about Soho. It's kind of like the place where all the clubs are. And we were in Soho just walking around and we saw a club that you know we thought looked pretty sweet it looked like uh, it looked really swanky there was a bouncer with an earpiece and a, and, and a clipboard there was like a red velvet string um, stop you know you were stopping people going in and stopping people going out there was a queue to get in and there was like a red carpet and we were like damn that looks like a sweet ass club man that is exactly where we're going to be going that night we'd sort of dressed up quite nicely quite smartly we had our smart clothes on smart shoes on we were looking good and uh we wanted to go into that club hit the dance floor and uh just take that place by storm man so we got in the queue and the queue was pretty long the queue was probably like 15 16 people long and uh you know there were couples and groups of people and everything and we waited in that queue we, we must have waited for about 45 minutes um, but you know, we thought to ourselves, this is an exclusive club. You know, you have to wait for exclusivity, man. If you want to go to a sweet ass place in London, you got to pay and you got to wait. And you know what? We are here, here and now, carpe diem. We are going into this freaking club. We're going to pay what we have to pay. We're going to queue for however long we have to queue. And that's just the way that it's going to be. So we sit, sat in that freaking queue for ages, waiting, waiting, waiting to get in there. And one by one, the queue got smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, we're gonna have to take the left off ramp over here, guys. So give me one second to concentrate on this. We don't wanna go ramping off this thing um, and destroying our truck. We've already inflicted 3% damage to this thing. And there's no freaking light here either. So that's kind of bad. 
man, the moon and the stars and the sky looks so freaking awesome in this game, man. Kind of reminds me of Minecraft, actually. <laughs> we better sleep, man. There's going to be zombies up in here soon. All right, we are heading on to... What is this? It looks, just looks like a smaller motorway of some kind. It's still a, a dual carriageway, though, so that's sweet. All right, so 40 is the speed limit. Let's get down to around 37, 38, 39 miles an hour. Cruise control, baby! There we go, man. This cruise control button is the most awesome thing that you guys have ever told me in this series. Thanks to you guys who pointed that out, man. Seriously. So anyway, guys, we got to the front of the queue of that club. Finally! Damn! It took forever, man. And we were so excited. We were, we were you know rubbing our hands together, talking, you know, fantasizing about the sweet-ass night that we were going to have, all the sweet girls we were going to dance with, all the sweet moves we were going to bust on the dance floor. We were going to cut a rug like nobody's business, people. And uh, we got to the bouncer and he looked at us, he looked us up and down and he was like, no, sorry, um, it's full, you guys can't come in. And we were like, what the jazz, dude? We've been waiting here for like 45 minutes. What, what's going on here? And he was like, sorry, you, uh, that, you can't come in, guys. Sorry. Oh, check. There's the London skyline, guys. I think we're going to go into the Blackwall Tunnel, actually. I think we're going to drive in the tunnel underneath the Thames. That's awesome. This is awesome. The Gherkin. I, I literally feel like I'm at home right now. I, 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 could, I could literally drive to my flat right now, <laughs> which would be kind of weird. But I could literally do that. <laughs> but it looks like, guys, we are, we've actually arrived at our... Um, our delivery route over here so what what are we gonna do guys I'm just gonna pick up the thing that we have to deliver and then I'll carry on with our story um, on the other side of this because we just have a little bit of, of stuff to do over here so let's just get on top of this thing let's look at the job offer and it is to deliver uh, let's have a look yeah we want to go to Amsterdam and we want to do this one right so let's take the job I think think yep 5,600 pounds nice um, London to Amsterdam 5,600 pounds take the gerb there we go nice oh, excellent what are we actually transporting let's have a look oh we have to go pick it up first right okay I think it's probably around the corner your trailer is ready proceed to the loading area Maximus do us proud man you've been free now you've been able to drive as hard as you you wanted but now we are uh, about to do a delivery so Get, get yourself together, man. Get yourself to freaking get. All right. Let's see if we can... Oh, uh, no. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. All right. We've got to back up into this thing. Let's turn the wheel. Go, Maximus, go. Go, you good thing. There we go, there we go. Sweet. Sweet! Bam! Loaded! Oh man, loading is so much easier than easier than parking. <laughs> okay guys, let's get out of here back on the road. We are on our way to Amsterdam! 280 miles to go. This is actually the longest trip that we've ever done. Um, but let's let's get on the road, man. We are not even, not even gonna sleep. We are we're, we're going for it. We are driving all the way to freaking Holland. Let's do this thing. So anyway, guys, let's get back to the story at hand. So we're at the we're at the front of this exclusive club. We've waited in the queue for 45 freaking minutes. We're at the bouncer right now. He's looking us up and down, saying to us, "Sorry, guys, you are not coming in here. This club is closed to you." And uh, you know, I'm I'm quite like a a passive person, and I I really hate confrontation of any kind. And um, whenever a situation arises where there should be some sort of confrontation or some sort of some sort of conflict, I usually back away. You know, like I'm not someone who will ask questions. If someone tells me like, sorry, dude, thank you. Thanks, dude. Sorry, you're not coming in here. I'm just like, okay, cool, whatever. I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> but my mate was like, he was not happy, man. He wanted to go in that freaking club. And he started questioning the bouncer and he was like, dude, what the hell, man? How, why are you not letting us in here? We are here to spend money. We want to, you know, spend money in your, in your club. We're going to pay your 20 pound entrance fee, buy ridiculously expensive drinks. Why won't you let us in here? Basically, the bouncer looked at us and he said, we only let guys in when they come with girls. <laughs> now, guys, th that is an ego blow from two angles. Number one, you're getting bounced from a club, right? Which is already a blow to the ego. And number two, you are being reminded by a giant ass bouncer that you are a loser with no girlfriend. And that is why you are being bounced from the club. 
<laughs> so it was like a double freaking whammy, man. And literally that moment when that bouncer said to us, guys, you're not getting in here without girls, took the wind out of our sails, man. We were just like so deflated. You know, we had such delusions of grandeur like we were going to have such an epic evening of dancing and everything and it just all suddenly crashed down in one mo in one fail swoop out of nowhere a bouncer crushed our dreams and ended um, what was supposed to be a sweet ass night man and you know we left dejected we left the club dejected we didn't know what to do we thought maybe let's just go back to the pub or whatever and you know what we were like I was like, dudes, I'm just going to go home, you know. Uh, the, the party's over, man. We, we tried our best. It failed. And, uh, you know, so what? There, there'll be another time when we can do this. Oh, oh, God. Sorry about that if there was anyone behind me. <laughs> um, but my friend who had been arguing with the bouncer, he was freaking determined, man. He was, he was determined to get into that club. And he said to us, guys... Why don't we just find a group of girls walking around on the street somewhere in London, ask them if they want to go to a club, and then we can say to them that we'll pay for their entrance fee. All they have to do is come with us. And I was like, dude, that is, that is, that is creep. That, that, that's kind of creepy, you know? I, I, don't, I don't want to be creeping all up in London, you know what I mean? That's kind of creepy. But he was like, no, come on, man, whatever. You know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll be awesome, and then maybe, who knows what will happen. Let's just do it. Let's just find some girls. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, uh, okay, whatever. And everybody was like, what are we delivering? That is some... Is this a, is this a, a trailer full of dead bodies? Damn, son, that is a horrible trailer. So anyway, we decided, okay, we're going to find some girls. And we walked around London trying to find a group of girls. And lo and behold, we found a group of four girls. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit right now that they, they weren't uh, exactly the, the, the pick of the litter. They weren't the cream of the crop. They weren't the, uh, you know, the Merlot of wines, if you will. They were girls, but that's about where it stopped. <laughs> but we thought, that bouncer can't bounce us because the girls aren't good looking. I mean, that is some sexist jazz. You know what I'm saying? That, is, that would be unacceptable behavior for a bouncer to do. So we said to the girls, come with us, man. No worries. It'll be sweet. We'll get into the club, we'll pay for your entry fee, and then we'll go on our way. We explained to them our predicament. They felt sorry for us. They wanted to help out. Sweet. Went back to the club, got back in the queue. Freaking 30 minutes later, got to the bouncer again. He looked at us, and he, he obviously recognized our faces. And, uh, you know, we were, sat, we were standing there looking in front of him with smug looks in our eyes, man. We were like, yeah, how do you like them apples, man? We managed to find some ladies. How about that? Now you can't freaking bounce us from this club. And uh, he bounced us again. <laughs> and uh, oh, my friend once again asked why. He said, look, we've got girls. What's the problem? And he just said, look, the club's full. There's no, there's no more people going in. Sorry. Uh, and that's, that's the end of it. But uh, I have a feeling that we got bounced because the girls that we brought with us weren't exactly um, up to this bouncer's standards. And you know what? That bouncer is a freaking sexist bastard. And dude, if you're watching this video, you are a freaking butthole. And I hope that a, a girl one day sticks a, a stiletto boot straight up your butt. That's what I, that, that, that is what I, I, I wish on you, sir. You freaking butthole. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that was basically my first night out with my friends in London and even though it, it we didn't actually end up getting into a club at the end and uh, we got embarrassed not once but twice um, and put, a, put a, a few girls through a, you know a rather sexist experience we had a good time and it's a memory that I'll always remember and you know it, it, it was a memory that I wanted to share with you guys because I, I had I had fun that night even though um, at the time I wasn't happy but I look back on it now and it was actually quite cool it was quite fun getting bounced in London man what a freaking hoot <laughs> but anyway guys we are back on the motorway on our way I'm assuming to Dover to get the ferry across to Europe and then we're gonna take a northerly journey all the way to the Netherlands and all the way to Amsterdam to deliver 
this trailer of dead bodies. <laughs> but guys, I'm going to end the episode here because uh, we have run out of time. I really hope you have enjoyed this night drive with me, your driver, Ren Diggity Dog. We have been playing Euro Truck Simulator 2 and it has been freaking sweet. If you've enjoyed it, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button so that you can keep up to date with this series and all the other sweet ass video series that are on my channel. Oh God, what the jazz? Oh God, did I just have an accident? Did I just have an accident? I think I may have just had an accident. Was someone behind me? Oops. <laughs> Guys, this has been Rendog playing. Let's play Euro Drug Simulator Dose. We will see you in the next episode. Goodbye, my friends.